These days, I rarely do hidden camera investigations. My employers discouraged it. They feared being sued. And frankly, I went along because I hated the secrecy behind it. I was always scared that the crook would catch me and break my legs. But James O'Keefe isn't scared. You probably know him from his most famous undercover sting. He and a friend pretended they were prostitute and pimp to catch workers for the advocacy group Acorn talking about how to hide income from illegal activities. Then he went on to catch a national public radio executive pandering for money from a fake Muslim group and claiming the Tea Party was seriously racist. So, James, you're lucky America has a First Amendment. Well, I mean, it's pretty remarkable the uh, pressure we've faced, the legal trouble we've gotten into. We've been falsely accused. And government coming after me for using false pretenses, lying to federal government officials, two-party consent laws. So people need to understand that there's not very much of a First Amendment in this country when it comes to citizen journalism and, and uh, undercover reporting. Well, let, let's talk about some of those cases. You were doing a story on Mary on Senator Mary Landrieu who uh, there were reports she wasn't answering her phone so you posed as phone repairman S so I guess that was against Louisiana law I suppose we could charge all of our politicians in Washington with entering their buildings using false pretenses if it's nothing more than just hey I'm fibbing about my intentions for being here these laws are, are designed to protect people from, or protect the government from being defrauded, but I'm an investigative reporter who uses undercover methods. I don't actually intend to commit fraud. I intend to have conversations to uncover them committing fraud. Still, America is better than most every other country. I mean, even Canada, which we think of a free, as a free country, where they do have sort of a First Amendment with an asterisk, but people get prosecuted for criticizing Muslims. I mean, here I can say President Obama's a liar. The chairman of Google is pandering to foolish lefties on global warming, and they can't do anything to me. You got in trouble, and I was threatened plenty of times on this two-party consent law, and uh, you had to settle with Acorn for $100,000. Explain the law. If I'm filming an Acorn worker, he has to con give me consent, or I need to be in an area where there's no expectation of privacy. And my critics like to use this Acorn $100,000 lawsuit as evidence I'm a liar, but that lawsuit was over invasion of privacy, whether or not a government-funded employee has rights to be recorded or not. It had nothing to do with defamation or lying about him. And by the way, David Korn of Mother Jones Magazine won a Polk Journalism Award for filming Mitt Romney in Florida, which is a two-party consent state. So yeah, I think journalists have, let's, love let's, that. Let's remind the audience of that clip. This was taken by a left-wing bartender and given to Mother Jones. The 47% were with him who are dependent upon So Mother Jones wins a Polk Award for that. They didn't do anything except take it from this guy and run it. But you get prosecuted. Yep, it's, it's, there's an incredible amount of hypocrisy. And all these whistleblowers, Daniel El Ellsberg is a hero. Julian Assange is considered a hero to some. I well, admire not so much. Things about Edward Snowden. But, the, but these people are considered heroes. But we do the same thing, and we do get attacked for it. And that's unfortunate. I've been attacked for it in, in Baltimore. We exposed a crooked doctor, and they, I, I was told, don't go to Maryland or you'll be arrested. Uh, the two, 12 states have this two-party law, and I, you know, like Maryland, California, Illinois, I suspect there's more corruption in those states. Absolutely. Illinois just recently, their Supreme Court uh, overturned a portion of the law, and I, people say, go to Chicago, James. Well, I can't actually do undercover work in Chicago because of the laws there. The Attorney General of New Hampshire actually tried to issue me a criminal grand jury subpoena for exposing the fact that dead people can vote. You used hidden cameras to show how easy it is to commit voter fraud, not just in New Hampshire, but several states. But before the last election, he had people try to vote using the names of dead people. Hello. Do you have a Reynolds Curran on your list, please? Curran? Do you have a Roger Grew? Do you have Paul Susan? Could he receive a ballot to vote without showing any ID? And you right. Democratic ballot. There you go, Mr. Oh, I left my ID in the car. You don't need it. New Hampshire passed a voter ID law after you did that expose. 
it was literally lighting the flames of democracy. The House of Representatives in New Hampshire passed a law. They cited this video. The people were outraged that ballots were being offered in the names of the dead. What did it do? It embarrassed the governor there who opposed photo ID law. So what did he do? His attorney general issued a subpoena, a criminal grand jury subpoena, because we embarrassed the government. We showed that you could vote fraudulently using dead people's ballots. And this is how they treat citizen journalists in this country. They try to arrest you. They try to jail you. They come after you. They use intimidation. Instead of solving the problem that our undercover reports show to be, to be wrong, they just try to attack the whistleblower. Well, yes, except you keep doing it, and they haven't put you in jail, though you did have to serve community service in Actually, they, they get three years, three years of probation. I was not allowed to leave New Jersey for three years. But in many other countries, you would be locked up forever, if not killed. So you do benefit from our First Amendment. Uh, I agree with you. I wish you were freer to tell people what's going on. Thank you, James. Thank you. Coming up.